The second main division of an income statement for a merchandise business is the cost of goods sold statement. Now the cost of goods sold is the cost to the seller of the goods sold to customers. All merchandise companies have goods on hand and they call the goods on hand merchandise inventory regardless of what the merchandise is, clothes, food, electronics, it's all merchandise inventory. And that is the quantity of goods available for sale to the customers at any time. Now the cost of goods sold is determined by computing how many, how much inventory did I have at the beginning of this accounting period? What are the total cost of all the goods that I purchased during the year? Those two together comprise the amount available for sale. Then at the end of the year I subtract what I have left unsold and that would be the cost of goods sold, the difference. Now before we go any further we have to talk about two different types of inventory systems. There's the perpetual ongoing inventory where the merchandise account is updated all the time. Every time I buy I debit the merchandise inventory account when I sell, I credit it. Now many companies are on that because now they can keep direct control because they have scanners and they can uh, use barcodes. So when they buy an inventory, they scan it, and when they sell inventory, they scan it. And in that way, they have an accurate record of their inventory. But there are also many companies that have very small items, and they can't afford to have barcodes on the items. So they're wearing what's called the periodic inventory system. Here the merchandise inventory is updated only at the end of the period. When I take a physical count to determine how much remains unsold. So therefore, basically determine the cost of goods sold of a company in this situation. Beginning inventory, as I said, they keep track of all their purchases during the year. And then they do a count at the end of the accounting period to determine how much they have left unsold. Therefore, it would look like this. A company beginning inventory at 34,000. It purchased 140,000 net purchases uh, for the year, which means they had 175,000 available for their customers. They count at the end of the year and they have 20,000 left unsold. Therefore, they must have sold 154,000. Now, under the periodic system, we use what's called a purchase account. We keep track of the purchases. So therefore, uh, we don't say merchandise inventory account, we use a purchase account. And um, the purchase account, when I buy in, it's debited, 30,000. Credit accounts payable. May 21st, I debit 20,000. Credit accounts payable, uh, cash that time. Now, as uh, we're dealing with merchandise, merchandise, uh, we normally give our good customers terms like 210 net 30 to pay. They can take a 2% dis percent discount if they pay within 10 days. For example, Hamlin um, gave us the 210 net 30. We owe them 30,000. Well, if we pay them 29.4, we can cancel our debt of 30000 we take a discount. Now this purchase discount is a credit account. Okay, credit 600. You see, it is a contra, asset, or a contra account to the purchasing account. The same with returns and allowances. If I return some goods, uh, then I can reduce my accounts payable, debit my accounts payable, but I credit an account, I'm going to keep track of this purchase returns and allowance, and I'm going to keep track by crediting it, 350. It too is a contra account to purchases. Now one more thing, transportation costs. These are important costs of the cost of goods sold. Now it depends on when legal uh, ownership transferred from the seller to the buyer. Those terms are written, written in the invoice. Free on board shipping point means that the person who is selling the items to us says they're free on board on my shipping dock. Therefore, I, the buyer, incur the transportation costs. 
I have to pay that to get my merchandise. On the other hand, if it says free on board destination, it means that the seller is paying for the shipping costs to ship it to my business. But you see, they're not doing it for anything. They built it into the invoice. So therefore, if it's in the invoice, that's fine. But if it's free on board shipping, then we also have to add the freight costs to the cost of acquiring the merchandise. So to summarize, cost of goods sold for a periodic inventory system starts with beginning inventory at the beginning of the year, add the purchases, subtract the discount, subtract the returns allowance, get me the net purchases, add the transportation in, then we get the net cost of purchases. Those two together give me the cost of goods available for sale. I subtract the ending inventory, and that means my cost of goods sold must have been 159000 But on a perpetual inventory system, I have one account, inventory, or maybe called merchandise inventory. And every time I buy, I debit it. Any time I, uh, it's returned, I credit it. And discount, I credit it. Freight in, I debit it. And when I sell it, I credit it. And in that way, most businesses are this. This is a simple way of doing it. But many of the journal entries that we're going to be using are for the periodic inventory system.